So now what I could do is I could go in here and I can say room 1.2. I can click on the tag and I can click on where it says room and I can type in dining room. And then I can go to the next space and I can click there and I can say kitchen. But that can get very tedious to have to go through the plan and change all of the tags like that. So a better way of doing it or an alternate way of doing it is to create a schedule. And this is where the data part of Revit comes in. This is how you can start gathering data, but it can also be used to help you manage the model as well. And I'm going to scroll down in the project browser to where it says schedule quantities. And I'm going to right click where it says schedule quantities and say new schedule. And we're going to create a new room schedule. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says rooms, click rooms. It's just going to be called room schedule. The phase is new construction. Click OK. And on the very first page of the handout is what we want the room schedule to look like. So to add the fields that you want to the schedule, you select them from this list over here. Now this is the list of all of the available parameters that are currently in the file. And so the first one that I want is number. So I click on that and I say add. On this side, the list of the parameters on this side, the one that's at the top is on the left side of the schedule. And then as you go down the list, it goes left to right. So number is first. Then I find name, and then followed by room type, which I don't have in there. So we're going to add that parameter. And we're going to add, just like we did with the ones for the project browser, we just add a parameter called room type. And it's going to be a text-based parameter. And we're going to put it under identity data. Now I don't have to select what category it's being assigned to because I'm already in a room schedule so that Revit already knows it belongs to rooms. And there's room type. And then lastly we want area. Now if you had added these in a different order, you can always use this move up, move down to reshuffle it on the list to get it into the proper order. Then we're going to go to filter. Now I don't want to filter anything out, but I could if I wanted to. I just want to show everything that's all the rooms that are in the model. So we'll skip to the next one. Sorting and grouping. I want to sort by number. So that puts all of the rooms in order by number. That's all I want. Then we're going to do a grand total. And what I want is just the total only. And then we go to formatting and here under formatting I have to tell Revit what I actually want it to total. And so I want it to actually total the area. So I click on area and then say calculate totals. And now the last tab here, well actually the last two tabs here, this is just appearance. So this is just how Revit shows the schedule. It's pretty self-explanatory as to what all of this is. And then this is something I don't really want to get into as part of the, the intro class. So click OK. And then there is our schedule. Now I'm looking at the floor plan and I can see what the room numbers are. Based on the room number here, I can on this schedule just click where it says room and I can type in the room name. So I can say for 1.4 it's the hall, for 1.5 that's mechanical and this is a little bit easier sometimes to do it from a schedule than it is from a floor plan sometimes and you can type in all of these different spaces now if you have spaces that have the same name you can pull them down from this pull down menu you don't have to type them every single time but most of these rooms have unique names so can't do that with this project and this is the master. And 
one ten is bedroom. Eleven is bath, and then lastly we have carport. Now the beauty of this is that if you change information in one location in Revit, it updates everywhere. You can do that in the schedule, you can do that in the floor plan, you can do it in the tag, you can do it in the properties of the room, you can do it anywhere you want. As long as you're updating the information, it updates everywhere. And so now if I go back to the level one floor plan, you can see that all of those names have been updated in the floor plan. Because I changed them in the schedule, they automatically change here. That's one of the beautiful things about Revit is if you edit something in one location, it updates that information everywhere throughout the entire project simultaneously. Black Spectacles is the home of online learning for architecture and design. With your Black Spectacles membership, you can watch the rest of this course and any of the thousands of video tutorials we've built to help you learn architecture software and to prepare for the architecture registration exam. Visit blackspectacles.com now to get started.